Welcome to the Co-Creative Sessions, your access point for knowledge and expertise from artists, creatives, change makers, designers, entrepreneurs, and community enthusiasts in the South Coast and beyond. Whether you know it or not, your environment does play a big role in your work. I recommend anytime you find something that's really effective, break it down. The idea is to get started today. Avoid overthinking it. The Co-Creative Sessions is funded by Mass Development TDI and the Bar Foundation as part of the TDI Creative Cities Initiative to boost arts-based economic development. This program is also supported in part by a grant from the New Bedford and Dartmouth Local Cultural Councils, local agencies which are supported by the Mass Cultural Council, a state agency. And now, the Co-Creative Sessions. And thank you for your patience and for joining us for the latest entry in the Co-Creative Sessions. I'm Scott Bishop. I'll be moderating tonight's session. Adam Mignanelli was born and raised in Providence, Rhode Island. He received his BFA from Parsons, the new school for design in New York City, and also studied at Central St. Martin's College of Art and Design in London. Adam has served in numerous leadership and management roles, climbing the ranks in well-known companies such as Vice, New York, Diesel, and Disney Corporation. Adam founded the art and design blog Ballast NYC, which gave birth to the independent curatorial initiative Ballast Projects, showcasing top up-and-coming contemporary artists in galleries and pop-up spaces. Alongside his Ballast Ventures, Adam currently serves in a head design leadership and management role for Disney Corporation, where he oversees a team of designers working alongside some of the most creative minds in the design industry. We do ask that you stay muted during the presentation, but if you have any questions for Adam during the session, please feel free to chime in. And now, here's Adam. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the introduction. Firstly, I want to say thank you. I, I really appreciate this uh, and, and having the chance to come talk. I, um, I, I, I feel really passionately about um, community organizations that try and push and support, um, you know, creative and, um, you know, trying to let, let people learn new and exciting things and, and find out things that they love to do. Um, I always like to start with a, a piece of artwork that I took a photo of many years ago um, that uh, I don't remember the artist's name and it still kills me to this day. I've searched far and wide for it. If you ever see this somewhere, please email me and let me know the name of the artist. But this was sort of like a, a, a sort of a meter that I always like to look at, which is sort of the in-between of disbelief and acceptance with a mix of uh, revulsion and devotion all sort of coming together. And, and I think that um you know some of the things that i'm, I'm gonna talk about here sort of talk you, you kind of go through these range of emotions all the time so um something that i like to kind of laugh at once in a while i used to keep this on my computer screens um so a little bit about um who the heck i am so um as as scott had had mentioned i, I grew up in rhode island um and you know the arts have always been something that's been super important to me and I felt that um, you know the 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 New England culture uh, has been super inspiring to everything that I do. Um, obviously, the here's a beautiful photo of Providence with its new expensive bridge. Um, the Rhode Island School of Design. Um, I did not go there, but I, I I spent a lot of time in that museum in museums all around uh, Rhode Island and New England and um, Massachusetts, and and this was something that really sort of shaped. The beginning of of why uh, I like to create artwork and design and all that kind of stuff, and this is kind of where it all started, which was really um, taking uh, classes with my with my mom as a really young child, and um, you would go around the museum and draw things uh, you saw, and that was something that started at a young age that really kind of pushed me into to the stuff that I do today. Um, I always knew a, a, a friend of mine in high school had moved to New York City, and I thought it was the coolest thing in the world at the time. And I tried to figure out a way to do that as well. And um, that uh, that's sort of how I ended up applying to the new school and going to Parsons, which is really where I think the you know from from the younger years of knowing that I wanted to be involved in the in the arts. Um, really helped me understand kind of the the um, the nature of of what it meant to sort of combine art and design and in business and and try and find a way to make a living doing that. Um, and I, I think that was sort of a, a very integral 
moment for me, but at the same time, um, really sort of helps open up these these uh, other opportunities. Um, and then here's just a, a a slide of some some stuff too. My my brother's a painter. This is uh, some of my you know big inspiration, and um, sort of that's where this sort of I, culture of, of creative has always kind of been surrounded in, in, in my family. This is also probably the most important slide here, which is that this is just a uh, a series of, of experiences that I've had. And, you know, I think there's there's so many different ways to to understand and um, and, and figure out what what works for you in, in any creative field. Um, but I hope you, you know, have find some inspiration in what I'm about to share and um, hopefully we can have some questions too. So kind of the whole system of this presentation here is really kind of this this pathway which is really that passion leads to curiosity which leads to to drive um which leads to opportunities and then building out what your self mission is and, and kind of finding more choices and, and i think that this is a constantly evolving change um that just you, you you're always sort of trying to find a way to um to find new ways to understand the things that are around you um, so initially, I think one of the most difficult parts for me was starting to understand how to choose a path uh, in, into, say, a design or, or creative career. Um, one of the one of the big big things, kind of to to jump back to sort of this, you know, stately museum and and fine art school that that inspired me was how do I actually make a living doing this stuff, and what what's going to help me get there and and i knew that um moving to a, a huge city from one of the smallest states was was scary and, and difficult but it was sort of like how do you even get into these places so what i started doing was um i started applying to as many internships as i possibly could and um just knocking on on anyone's door who would who would listen um in spin magazine which is a um a music magazine at the time that was sort of a, a, a an answer to the opposite of Rolling Stone um, offered me uh, an internship that was in the basement of some some crappy building and uh, I spent a lot of time there which actually gave they gave me one of my first jobs um, so these are a number of the companies that I, I worked for over the years um, and now I'm currently at the Walt Disney Company um, but all of these places in, in brands kind of helped shape where I am today. Um, and ironically, a lot of this kind of started in the music industry, which is something that I never envisioned myself being. And I had never even really heard of Spin Magazine um, when I when I was offered a, an internship there. And that sort of gave way to things like uh, Zoo York, a skateboard company that had connections to those people. And then a lot of those people ended up going to work at Vice um, and and uh, other places are around. Um, so in a weird way, everything was a little bit connected, and I wasn't really clear on that until far later. In the beginning, you know, I, I started to um, I started to explore and, and try and take on as many different roles as I could, and look and, and pivot based on the things that I thought were happening in the in the in the sort of like marketing and design world. But the piece that was missing was that I wasn't doing anything for myself and, and how I was sort of responding back to that work um, was different. And so one of the things that we, I started doing was, this is um, when blogs were a thing, it is it, I wanted to have a, a way to sort of express the things that, that I was seeing around me, but have it as sort of in my own, um, my own sort of viewpoint and take those things and try and invent it from, from my own way and my own sort of creative outlet outside of work um because i think that you know one of the things that i think it's difficult especially as a graphic designer or a creative director you know any any sort of role you take in the commercial side of design work is that you can get really sucked into that and then you start to lose your inspiration and so um kind of the the pivots here for me have always been to sort of have these opportunities to create your own um your own sort of expression as you're doing client work on the side. 
And this was a way of doing that. I had a very small amount of followers and things like that, but it was something that started to um, get, get things out there. And so I published some books. Um, this is something uh, around typography with, with design in, in Italy. And, um, you know, as those worlds started to collide, you'd, you'd have a lot of uh, collaboration that would happen where people who had seen something on, on the blog would, would talk to me about something at work, um, which led me to other things. And so um, I think that that sort of curiosity that, that, that helps build um, the, you know, your, your work um, and opportunities for, for jobs and making money also has to feed back into other things that you do in, in your personal life. And so um, I, I kind of put through the stages here, these, what I'm calling like cultural curiosity and personal fulfillment moments. And it started with a blog. And then um, one day after work, um, I, there was a coffee shop and bar that opened next to our office. And I, read, I went in there one night and um, was talking with some friends and ran into the owner and they had just opened. And I said, hey, you know, I have a bunch of friends that want to show some artwork. Um, what do you think about doing something here? And they were trying to get people to, you know, know this place. And um, no one was really there yet because it was sort of in a random corner that um, had not really, uh, what didn't have a lot of foot traffic. And so we ended up, you know, they offered to have me throw a show. And I asked a bunch of friends to do that. And um, this is kind of what gave birth to this thing, Ballast Projects, which was sort of a physical manifestation of the blog and, and into the art world. Um, and so this is the first show that I did um, at this sort of bar, coffee shop, um, creative space that sort of gave way to a variety of other shows that I ended up doing, um, not only in partnership with them, but other people that I sort of met um, out and about as I started to do these things. And so um, there, I met a couple who had started their own art fair called the Spring Break Art Show, which actually opens tonight uh, in New York. They've been doing it every year since a long time now. And, and then because I had done those shows, um, they had given me opportunity to, to do um, some shows at their fairs. And so I started to try and sell work um, and showcase other artists who I felt weren't being shown in galleries um, and other spaces. So here's a variety of, of artwork that I had shown. Um, this is B. Tom Stevenson. He is uh, from from Massachusetts. Um, so so here's a variety of, of artists and, and stuff that I showed. And because of these spring break art fair shows, I was invited to do uh, a booth in Miami for our Basel, which was, I think, like the pinnacle of success. And I never thought that I would uh, be doing a show at a coffee shop um, with a bunch of my friends to being asked to try and sell some stuff in Miami, which was um, crazy. And I think the only piece I sold at this fair was this white one here, which is always the weirdest thing to me. But um, so 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 that was sort of the, the progression there. And then um, that went on to, you know, do a, a variety of, of other gallery shows. And um, to this day, most of the people that I came across doing that are um, some of my best friends today as well. And I think that a, a lot of this work, um, none, I, none, of the, none of the connections and the abilities I would have, that I needed to do this wouldn't have happened if I hadn't worked at the magazines and other places because I needed people to help with certain things and um, you know a support system. And, and it all sort of started to come together. And then I kind of went into uh, the next phase of this where I was like, I think it's really important to um, make time not only for other people's work, but also for yourself. And um, I've always been an artist myself, but I started to spend a lot more time. Here's a very serious photo of me that my friend took in my studio. Uh, and I started to, to spend a lot of time making my own paintings. So I felt that I was so stuck to the computer um, and tracking around other people's paintings that I needed to, to get some stuff out on my own. Um, and here's just a, a series of, of artwork that I've made. And I, I felt, I feel pretty strongly about the fact that the, you know, it's, 
the the technologies that we have today and, and the abilities we have through the internet and digital video and all that kind of stuff is fantastic but having some sort of physical um making is is always something that that has helped me a lot um and i also do a lot of collage work too which i think ties back to the the early days of magazines and my love for for printed things um and lastly you know one of the other things that i started to do is i i figured like i should kind of put my money where my mouth is and and make sure that i invest as well into the the things that i i've been pushing for a while and so i've started to um you know purchase a lot of my friends artwork as well and here's just a, a variety of, of some that, that, I, that i've got over the years but um i think that there's a there's really a strong importance to um having that ability to to you know take of some of the things that you've made and some of the money you make from the the design side and the commercial side of things and make sure you reinvest it back in the arts community and um to that point i think you know as i've started to change the way that uh that that i work and the way that the industry changes in terms of marketing and design and what it means to be a designer or artist today um that's sort of once again going to be the next the next wave of of change and i think that the, those things are still um yet to be seen but you know, I, I, as of today, um, working in the the, the streaming business, um, we're starting to see even more shifts in terms of what what it means to be a designer and what it means to um, create marketing and and putting things out in the world. So um, the next thing is yet to yet to come. I hope you guys enjoyed um, seeing some of the work and. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions, but I'd, I'd love to love to answer them. Adam, I'd like to kick off with a question. Um, so you've worked at a lot of high profile com companies, and I'm just wondering, you know, did you find it challenging to carve out time and energy for things like curating or for your own creativity? And if so, how did you manage that? It's, it's very difficult to 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 take personal time away, I think, uh, especially working in the the, the media industry like like with vice and, and the magazines and stuff was that there wasn't really an off switch so i i think part of it was that i started what was social and outside of work and what was work started to really um blend together but basically what i would say is i i, I spent the majority of my personal time making sure that those were the things i wanted to do um like making artwork and putting on gallery shows with friends was something that I, I found to be um, something that that fed my energy levels, but very difficult. Yeah, a lot of a lot of nights and weekends. So you had to set boundaries around that because you talked about work bleeding into your personal life at that point. It's like, right. I need to carve this out for me and for the work I want to do and for the people I want to be around. Yeah, and I mean, I would take vacation days and say I'm going. Um, I'm going ten blocks away to go sit in this show that i put together to, to try and sell stuff and talk to people about the artwork um it was things like that and, and like i said I, I think the boundaries were really like and trying how, how i broke up the the presentation was really like to have those cultural curiosity moments that fulfill you personally to make you go back and push even more in your job because what i do now professionally and what i do for artwork and my own time is very, very different. I go from making Buzz Lightyear ads to making collages from food magazines. Like it's, you know, it's it's good to have a little balance. I just want to share a comment from Debbie. Um, really interesting career arc, Adam. The part where the coffee shop art show really set things in motion for you art-wise was great to hear. Adam, it's great to hear you. Great presentation and really, really impressive. Um, you know, we've known each other for a long time, and I don't think I fully comprehended the, um, the scope of how many um, how many places you've worked and looking at kinfolk and what that became and all the different things you've touched. And it's you were there. It's like, it, I was there a couple, couple of fun evenings there, but um, 
And, uh, you know, I'm wondering, I, I remember those early days and the time you dedicated to your career. And I remember going off of what Scott had just talked about. I remember those, those weekends being worked. Um, can you elaborate on some of the things you saw on the industry side of the art spectrum um, working at companies that are about to essentially blow up like a vice and yeah. then being a part of that ride all the way, like kind of like, I mean, vice is, is enormous now um and just like seeing that whole thing go down yeah it, it's I, i'm glad you brought that up because the, the thing is it, it, there's a little bit of there was a, a lot of luck involved in that stuff there are a lot of media companies that that didn't make it um and some that did but but i think in the part of the reason that i that i stayed working there for so long despite the the i could have gone to work for a different company and made more money and i didn't because I, I knew there was something there that didn't exist elsewhere. And I think you always have to find that in places because wherever you work, there's always going to be things you don't like or things don't necessarily hit the way you want them to or you're never paid enough money or you don't get enough time off. But the reality was that there were people there that were like-minded that wanted to do more things in food, music, art. And, and I knew that in, in a way, building your Rolodex and meeting people in, that were like-minded, that cared about other things, started to really blend the two together. And that kind of goes back to what Scott said, like, how'd you make time for this stuff? Is it that you're surrounding yourself around people that you want, that, that care about those things? They're making films on the side, but they edit videos at night for them, things like that. But but even like the, the coffee shop that turned into a clothing brand, Kinfolk Studios, you can look them up, they're closed now. Um, but, but, you know, even you're meeting people that are trying to do the same thing at the same time. And I think you can come across that regardless of, if you're, you know, early in your career, late in your career, or you don't, you don't know where, where you're going. It's finding like-minded individuals, which is why, you know, not just a, uh, a, a, a plug to, to the co-creative center, but, but these, these cultural communities are what makes this stuff happen. And I, I think that without that um you wouldn't really be able to get this stuff done and i think that some of these companies that exist actually function not only as a, a profit making business but also as a cultural hub um and i think you see that in a lot of different places whether it's you you work at a restaurant um that that's well known or you work at uh it doesn't it doesn't really matter what it is it could be a corporate office it could be uh you know a, a, a coffee shop that, yeah, I think, I, I, I think the, you know, I'll just finalize my comment. I was just saying, I think one of the things that was most impressive to me was, um, you know, your ability, your ability to keep an open mind during all your different moves and with the different people you've surrounded yourself with. That's, that really seemed like a core concept of the different things you've had going on is you really stay true to who you are and what you want to be doing. And I feel like in any industry, so many of us don't, you know, we, we, we either come out of school and we say, we want to do this in this sector, and this is what we're going to specialize in. And we're, we made our mind up and we go for gold. Um, but it's people like yourself who <laughs> really are much more successful and because they keep an open mind to, new opportunities and new people and new things and, and i think that like back to, to to your point like back to the the initial piece of like reading reading the change is we see cultural change every day and we we, we know that these things are happening all over the place whether it's you know um things that are happening locally or, or nationally or internationally but it's even just those small nuances where you start to see the the um the tides change with thing, with things, and and you kind of have to flow with it. Is especially in a creative field, people want to talk to you and to and to do. And this is just my personal point of view. 
but it doesn't matter if you don't know how to code a website or like fit, real skills are important. But ultimately, you can learn to do different things. It's really the point of view that you have around how you get it done. And, and ultimately, I'm sure at some point people are going to laugh and say streaming is a, it was an archaic method or um, the same way that, you know, the, the screenshots I was showing you of, of like a blogspot blog or probably something that uh, most most Gen Z folks have, have never even seen or joke about. It's like it constantly evolves and it's, it's never going to stop. If you don't read the room on that stuff and, and find new ways to do it, um, you, you you could get caught in a tough spot, and, and sometimes we do. I mean, I, I'm showing you the, the the successful pieces that I that I've had in this presentation, not necessarily the 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 really really bad moments. Um, but I think to to looking at what what Margot asked, like going from say a Vice to a Disney, being completely different was was exactly that, which was things were changing, and sometimes you need to go in the opposite direction. Um, and sometimes it's a miss, sometimes it's not. I quit Vice because I couldn't work on the curating work. Um, I was working 12, 14 hour day, just insane hours for little pay. And I said, I'm not going to do it. And I went to go work for that PR agency, M Booth, because they wanted someone who knew how to open a digital video shop. And I said, well, I helped do that advice. And they said, okay, you have a job. And I worked um, nine to five and on summer Fridays, we'd get off at two and I was paid a considerable amount more money. And um, then I ended up actually going back to Vice because they uh, offered, you know, new, new, new opportunities. But it was, you know, it was things like if I ever thought I was going to work for a midtown PR agency, um, you, you know, there's zero chance I, I thought I would ever do that. I just wanted to say thank you, Adam. That was awesome. Oh, she was just cheering you on. <laughs> um, I yeah, I, I was totally blown away by your versatility in terms of moving in between mediums because you rarely see that. I think with artists and creatives, like we tend to get stuck. Um, in something that we have, um, you know, like finessed and have like certain skills with, but it seemed like you're really fluid in terms of what you move in, in between with um, your creative output, which is, which is awesome. It's like you're harnessing just like creativity in social uh, networking, which is, which is totally key to what you're saying, but um, and it, you're, in your works, awesome. It's great to see your painting and all of the collaborative work you've also done and your design work. So thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, and, and yeah, I, I mean, just to, to go back to the mission of what the Co-Creative Center stands for is, is something I think is just extremely important um, on, you know, on the, on the community level. When I was in middle school, I helped make a, a, a zine for AS220, which was a, an arts organization in Providence at the time. And, um, you know, places like that are how this stuff happens. Um, yeah, so it's really exciting like, to see what, what you guys will, will keep doing. And I hope to, you know, be, be doing stuff with you guys in the future. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, definitely. But obviously, we'd love to have you come visit. Margaret, AS220 is a whole campus now. I know. It's insane. It's and, you totally. Know, all, all of those those types of places are really just uh, ideas that that have turned into to something bigger and, and people believe in it. So, um, yeah. Uh, Debbie does have a question. Adam, what's next <laughs> on the horizon for you? that's what the the last page of my presentation and the 17 question marks are for um, <laughs> i think you know i i started um when i when i started the disney job uh it was march 23rd of 2020 um so i never went into an office 
I never uh, met most of the people that I hired. Um, and uh, as great timing, as of today, I was told that we are going to start going back into an office. So the next thing for me is trying to figure out how to manage a team of creatives going uh, from fully remote some of which have moved to uh, different states and out of the country. And then A, having to tell them they got to somehow show up sometime, somewhere, somehow. Um, and uh, and figuring out how to communicate. That That's the next thing for me is figuring out how to manage, communicate with people in a remote slash real life environment. Um, that's going to be a tough one. But I don't. But I. But the. But the. The, the real answer is I. I really have absolutely no idea. Um, and I think that going from, you know, uh, rock and roll magazines and and youth culture, digital media to like a behemoth uh, corporation like 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 Disney is something that um, has its own learning curve and will you know will probably feed me some some new things to uh uh to figure out in the future too how much would you you know you've reached you've you've gone from internship which we've all done to you're now kind of at the pinnacle of where most people would say they would want to be how much would you attribute where you've gotten to staying connected and networking to the local scenes you know seeing you in new york you know you just you've been on the scene and you've whether not even new york in providence in southern new england and you know you've always been entrenched within what you've been saying these local communities and making sure to stay connected within the art scene itself and I feel like that seems to have propelled you within the art industry, um, a gigantic way. And I mean, I would be curious to hear how much you would attribute to networking and connecting with a lot of these people to where you've gotten today. Yeah. Um, I mean, out, outside of like the, the general, the general uh, uh, term of just being curious and, and curiosity is is ultimately like persistence in, in that it's not fun to go to a gallery opening sometimes or you don't, you don't necessarily want to do something at night but it's important to get out there and talk to people and i think again like the um it's 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 the that balance of the things that feed you and make you more energized and the things that um that can help you do things to help you make a living. But I think the ultimately, um, like I said, like the, the community aspect to it is huge, whether it's a micro community of, of four people that like to do something um, or a space where people can come and just try and figure something out. Um, I think that COVID in four large cities like New York has been really difficult with doing things like that. I think even if not that it really matters because it doesn't wouldn't will never happen but if COVID had never happened we'd probably be doing this in real life um so there's there's that sort of that that shift in how culture works that i think is still yet to be determined thanks for joining us for the co-creative sessions stay tuned for upcoming sessions and view previous sessions in the series by visiting the co-creative centers events page at cocreativenb.org the Co-Creative Sessions is funded by Mass Development TDI and the Bar Foundation as part of the TDI Creative Cities Initiative to boost arts-based economic development. This program is also supported in part by a grant from the New Bedford and Dartmouth Local Cultural Councils, local agencies which are supported by the Mass Cultural Council, a state agency. We look forward to seeing you at the next Co-Creative Session.